Welcome back guys, today we're going to be looking at finishing off the hub rebuild here um, and then we're going to look at fitting it to the subframe down the floor just over here if you point down there for me. I'm also accompanied by Matthew here from wherever he is, MattST150 on his YouTube channel. I need to see have an eye of what I'm doing uh, but I'll crack on with this, get the subframe put together and then I'll have a follow up video after that fitting the subframe into the actual vehicle. So uh, I'll get started. Right, so first I'm going to try and fit the new wheel cylinder in, which is normally the hardest part on these to do, uh, because of that little circle up on the back. So. Try and navigate in here. And then, once you got all four, all three sides over, you just want to try and push the little clip into the groove but you'll still find it's the most awkward job on it right that's that in got this little bong to protect it for now right so that was that Delphi wheel wheels in the fittage and then now I'm going to put the cam set in so like we did before when I showed you about the cam that goes in there it's like a cone with four flats on it to adjust these wedges out to push the shoes for when you're using the handbrake. Right, so to do this, I'd only slap a bit and proper slip on the thread so that it's easy now. Good amount of doesn't hurt. And then I've got to feed it backwards in, so from the inside of the drum to the out. Which is a little bit awkward because you've got nothing to grip from screwing it in. Once you get some of it in there, you'll have a thread or two pop out the back you can use a spanner on. And then you can just wind it all the way in. Just see it's just coming through here. Then you want to be basically going uh, anti clockwise on this to get it to wind in from this side. Go as far as you can so it clears the threads and gets a good amount of slip in there, cop slip. And then we'll put the collets in to uh, put the adjuster and then pack them full of copper grease and then fit the shoe. Cool, that's that done now, so I'll take these little cam bits here, slap grease on them, so a proper slip, all around four sides, and then slot them in. It's the obviously the tapered angle to match the taper on the actual cone itself that's in there with the cam. And now we'll look at fitting these shoes. So, this is the. What side is this? This is the passenger side. So, this is the orientation for the drums on the passenger side. I'm going to show you once I line these slots up. So, towards the radius arm, you've got the big semicircle with nipple on the end. And on the right hand side of it, you've got a slit. These can be quite awkward too to fit, if I'm honest. So, let me get some pliers. This handbrake adjust a lever. So, when you put this in, make sure you don't forget to do it because you can't do it afterwards. Put this in place. 
the cutout grooves facing outwards. They hook onto the actual shoes themselves. And then what I do is I normally hook the spring first and then stretch it over each side. First one. That's a little. That's that side. That's your shoe assembly setup. Then, so remember, big radius cut out at the top here, slit on this side, and obviously it's mirrored on the bottom. The hooks of the springs go into the circle on the left, and the slit on the right underneath those larger bits we were just looking at. And then uh, now I'll show you fitting the knuckle on, uh, the knuckle cup. So just here I'm going to fit the new, it's like a ball joint cup for the radius arm. Uh, best way I find to do it is start off my hands, the best way, get a socket that matches the size up, and just like that, and it'll, it'll guide its own way in. Perfect, no damage or anything. While I'm here, I'll fit this rubber grommet on the back to cover up the uh, handbrake lever gap. Oh, that's that one. Uh, my handbrake lever arm as well, I covered the whole, I didn't paint it, I just covered the whole thing in copper slip just to keep it well lubricated because uh, in case it starts to get a bit gritty and you can feel it through the handbrake. Right, um, you've already probably seen that I fitted the handbrake quadrant which is really easy. I bought the kit to replace the, those uh, cutter pins instead of them. Now I've got a bolt instead. It's okay. The only thing is it falls a bit short on this side so there's a possibility this nylon might fall out at some point in life. But if it does I'm not bothered really. Um, then I've put these Goodridge brake lines and then I think what I'll do now is I'll show you how to fit the new copper line on there and shape it off the old one. Try and get it a bit straight like that, and then we'll start following the first angle. So, just matching that straight now. There, then it's about here. So we'll go 90 degrees down. It's pretty good. And just use my thumb to guide it against the old one. And then about here is where it starts to curve around again the opposite way. And then this end bit about here needs to go 45 this way about. That looks reasonably the same now ish. Just the last bit here, I need to put a bit more of a bend on it. Just be careful you don't overdo it because you can hold the pipe shut if you go a bit heavy handed on it. So try and keep your curves long and slow. That looks good. So now we'll try and put it on here. But just remember as you're doing it, you're still going to have to make small fettling adjustments. So leave your unions just a few turns on. And then adjust where necessary by hand. I've already got the metric kit, so the big one on this side is a 14 mil. Give that a good nip up. No, no, I'm happy with it. And then this side is an 11 mil. That shouldn't take too much to tighten them up, but you should be able to feel it in your hand. Well, feels good. So we'll flip it up this way, and now what I'll do is I'll show you how to rebuild the wheel bearing. 
and then we'll proceed to fitting it as one piece. All right, so here's the hub unit. The racers are left in there, so it's hard to see, but in here you'll find there's two machine notches on each side, which will help you knock the old racers out. So let me just find the boards and extension a little bit. I've got something to sturdy up on it. And then it shouldn't take too much of force, but it should just want to slide out these racers. It should be quite loose, really. Make sure you're removing them evenly each side. As soon as you get an angle on it, then it'll get jammed. There's one racer out there. Flip it over. And again, the slots, you just use them to work it out. It's only a cheap one I got from Mini Mime, I think. Uh, it was the only one I could get in time without waiting for it. Let's start with the racers on these. So try to keep your bearing and racer that came together as a pair. Don't try to mix them up. So when they machine, the machine together as a pair. And they will have a longer life to do it that way. And these can be quite brutal with, because of the type of metal they're made of, you can really give them a good beat and then it won't damage them. Uh, so, first I put my racer in, level it off as best I can by hand. There is different ways of doing it, you can use a threaded bar and wind it in, or you get someone to press them in, or you can hold the whole bearing cage in and whack it with a socket. The only problem with the socket and the racer cage, it damages the cage sometimes, because that's the soft part of the bearing. So me, I just use a draft here and just feed it in slowly each side. And that's that one home. Nice and smooth and fitted perfectly to the inside there. Next to on this side. Cool. So that's all homed and in now. What you do need to make sure you don't make a mistake of is <coughs> when you're fitting these, if you're in a rush and you're not paying attention, make sure you put the tape the correct way around because I've seen people rushing and doing this and then fitted the sleeve in the wrong way and then you have to knock it back out and start again. But you, hopefully you'll never make a super mistake like that. So now, so on the grease, I push the packaging in half like that and spray it into two parts to make it easier for myself. Slice the packaging, that's for the front side, this is for the rear side. Right, so that's in there. Put it around here a bit. You can give your bands a bit of roll in there. Help start them off. Right, and then drop it in. The more you get in now, the better it is primed for when it's, you start using the car. And don't be afraid to use all of this grease. And then so you don't damage it, I use a socket like this. Yeah. So here, you need to That's it. They don't sit completely like in the set. There's like a, a ridge inside where the bush will push up to and then stop. Uh, spread your grease around if you've knocked it out because the bearing's loose on the front. Give it a few good rotations, try and help it out. On here. Get your nut on there. So you'll find that it's a one inch will fit, but it's a little bit loose. So I use a 24 mil socket on here. And remember, it's left to tighten. And on these, what I do, wind it in until I can't wind it no more by hand. Like that. Then I'll slack it off, it's completely loose, give my hub a free rotate, so, and then bring it back to nip, 
and a little bit on it uh, sitting. That's what I do for my hooks. And it feels like a bit firm resistance. No play in it, nice and firm. You can't really check for plainness, you've got the wheel hub on, but it's a little bit firm, that'll be alright. Seeing as fresh bearings. Then a nice new split pin to go in it. I'm lucky this time it's landed pretty much where you want it to be, sort of. So, the top, and use my pliers to twist the bottom one down into the crown. Stop that coming done. Cap to finish it off. Make sure you've cleaned out all the old grease the cap. And then you can use a lead hammer or a leather hammer or whatever you want or a copper. Whatever it can, use this one. That's it. It's in. Put the screw in here. And that's it. One complete radius arm ready to be fitted now. Um, so let's see if we can get it fitted to the subframe now. So that goes there. Before I do that, I would like to use a tiny little scanner and on these nut holes here, I'll put a tap inside them just to make sure they're clear before I start off. I've got all the half inch bolts in place now, just nipping them up. I've already used a 19mm and a this here, three quarters of an inch to lock up the main pin that runs across the radius arm. each radius arm all fitted up, all put together, corner brackets are on. Uh, I put like a two-piece in earlier, over here for the brake line and the centre mount. That TP, sorry, the brake lines that run to the TPs, um, they're pretty straightforward, it's just cock line, you just screw them in and tighten them. I'm not going to bother filming me fitting them because it's pretty straightforward. Um, sorry for the bad lighting and filming, it's quite dark out at the minute. So. It's hard to get any light on anything. But then that's that completed. Hopefully tomorrow I'll be doing the video of me fitting the subframe in the car itself. Uh, we'll soon see. So hopefully that was of some use to you guys. I will uh, pop up another video soon fitting it into the car. Um, yeah, if you need any more help, drop me a comment uh, and I'll do what I can to help. But thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next video.